of security since uh, Wednesday this week. Yesterday, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, concluded the 2017 general elections upon the declaration of His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta as the president-elect. I wish to thank Kenyans for keeping calm throughout the tallying process and cooperating with security actors which ensured peace and security. Across the country, there has been a state of public safety and security. By and large, life has returned to normal, and as I have indicated, I urge everyone to go about their normal activities assured of safety and security. In spite of this general state, there have been erratic incidents of lawlessness in a few places, such as uh, Kibera in Nairobi and parts of Kisumu County. In these places, reports indicate that criminal elements have attempted to take advantage of the situation to loot and destroy property. The security forces have reported that they have responded appropriately and they have restored normalcy in most of these parts. Um, I wish to remind the public that whereas we enjoy the right to hold demonstrations, this must be carried out peacefully and unarmed without posing threat to life or property. Furthermore, the enjoyment of these rights does not allow any citizen to infringe on the rights of other citizens. I reiterate the government, that the government will stop at nothing short of protecting the lives of Kenyans and their property and warn any person that may have criminal intent that they will face the full force of the law. I wish to acknowledge that the independent media has by and large reported responsibly. However, we note that some sections of the media have been broadcasting old footage of violent incidents with some of it drawn from outside the country. The media has a responsibility in law to inform accurately and not to fund violence. I urge every media house, both local and international, to exercise their duty responsibly. In the same vein, I wish to reiterate my call on the responsible use of social media platforms. Part of the challenges we face right now in the country in respect of those places that I mentioned is related to inflammatory um, communication on social media. We have in the last few days noted a significant increase in the number of false and inflammatory messages being spread on social media platforms. Some of these carry rumors and inciting messages that risk sparking violence. As you are aware, we have laws that govern uh, against the abuse of social media, and the government will not hesitate to take action against culprits. Security agencies are strictly instructed to track and arrest the culprits, and accordingly, I need to point out that I have been informed this morning that we have made some arrests, and we will continue to do this to ensure that there is a measure of responsibility in the manner in which we conduct uh, ourselves. Now that the elections are behind us, I urge Kenyans to revert to their normal lives. As always, our security agencies remain alert and ready to safeguard both life and property within our territory. I need to say this, which um, uh, will go to emphasizing some of the things I've said in the formal statement I have read. We are responsible public servants. We know that everything we do is 
business will be held to account for. And therefore, what we tell you and what we say is information we are 100 percent sure about. Our country is safe. Our country is secure. Save for the places I have mentioned, Kisumu, parts of Nairobi, like Madare and Kibera, the rest of the country is completely safe, and Kenyans are moving on with their businesses. The impression being created through irresponsible use of social media that we have security challenges in this country is false. Some of the information contained in that social media communication is not true. I am grateful, and, and we have to be very honest as public servants and tell you this, we are sincerely grateful to most of our mainstream media in Kenya. We have seen a measure of responsibility. A number of senior editors have called us this morning from several media houses to clarify certain things either they're hearing or certain things they're seeing on social media. And we have been forthright, available, and, and totally honest in explaining the information we have and how we have dealt with uh, uh, the situations. So it's not true that we have uh, security challenges other than in the areas that I've mentioned. And even in those areas, let us be honest, fellow Kenyans, and, and, and in, in, in all fairness, uh, there are no demonstrations happening because peaceful demonstrations and picketing are protected by the Constitution. Our police always act according to the law. Anyone who would like to have or hold a peaceful demonstration will be protected by the law. They know what they need to do, notify the police, work with the police, and they will carry on with their peaceful demonstration and their picketing. That is protected by the law. We know it. We ourselves will ensure that we protect it. But individuals or gangs that are looting shops, that want to endanger lives, that are breaking into people's businesses, those are not demonstrators. They are criminals. And you expect the police to deal with criminals how criminals should be dealt with. So I want to ask us, and particularly ask our fellow Kenyans in these three places I have named. My brothers and sisters, we are each other's keeper. This is our country. You have a right to express displeasure, and you have a right to feel unhappy and you can do so lawfully. We too are your brothers and sisters. We are your government. And we are responsible enough to hear you and to do whatever it takes to address whatever grievance you have. If you have a question to ask us, it is our responsibility to answer it. But please do not hurt a fellow Kenyan. Do not break into people's property. Do not damage people's homes. Because this is hurtful. We, we are each other's keeper. We have been living together all along. There's no reason why we should disrupt people's businesses, either because we think that is how to express displeasure. Finally, I continue to thank you. And on behalf of my colleagues in the security sector, as you can see here, we are grateful for what we have seen and how most of our mainstream media has conducted itself. But please, we want to ask you also that let us all make some concerted effort to deal with the challenge we face with social media. Much of what is going on in social media is very destructive uh, to, to, to our country. It distorts fact. And in most cases, we're just seeing lies. Uh, people tell me this morning about people having been killed here, there, elsewhere. We would tell you if that happened, and we would know. And, and we are honest enough. The Inspector General of Police is here. We are honest enough. If that happens, we will tell you, and we will own up that something has happened. At the moment, it just simply is not true. These are just lies. Let, let, let's stop falling victim to negative-minded people uh, who would like to create alarm in the country. There is no need for alarm. The country is secure. We are safe. We are going about our activities. And let us all work together and join together to continue developing uh, our country as we must, as responsible citizens. Thank you very much, and may God bless you indeed, and may God bless our great country even as we move on after the general elections. Thank you.
to really hold uh, the environment that you have described to hold. I think it will also demand a 